How frustrating is it for you when your kids go to your ex's house and they're doing stuff that you would totally not approve of? Yeah. My ex let my kids have sleepovers on weeknights, on school nights. He would put them in Ubers together, but alone. Jessica lives in New York City, by the way. So she's a city girl. She's not, he's not. So when my kids were, when my daughter was eight, she was sometimes in an Uber alone coming back to mine instead of doing like the proper drop-off. So today we want to talk about what you can and can't control when the kids are not with you. By the way, you can't control anything (laughs) when your kids are not with you. So there you go. You control nothing. And I know as um, strong-minded women um, that we like to control everything. Yes. And we like to fix everything and we like to manage everything. And guess what? You got to let that shit go. You got to let that shit go. Whether it's your kids or just situations, let it go. You take care of you. You control your own stuff. You don't worry about other people's stuff. And you have to just keep in your mind, it's their mother or it's their father and they're not going to hurt them. And by the way, if that is a concern, then this isn't for you. This is not relevant, (laughs) right? We're talking about things where if you may not just be ready for a certain phase in your kid's life, for example, lots of New York City families have different perspectives on what age a child should be to be able to take public transportation by themselves. I didn't grow up around New York City. So to me, the proper age would probably have been 12. My ex- who didn't grow up in New York City, but right outside and spent a lot of time in New York City as a child and growing up himself, evidently felt that the appropriate age was 10. I did not know that. Darren was never on public transportation at 10 years old in New York. No, he wasn't. But I think that his, his coming into the city and the friends that he had that had grown up in the city, even though it was different times back then, and knowing that our kids had friends whose parents allowed them to do that, He definitely was one of the more lax parents. So I didn't find out until way later that my kid had already been taking the subway by himself for at least six months. So if you think that there's shit going on in your life that pisses you off, imagine finding that out, right? There's someone who always has a situation that's worse than yours. And we're not here necessarily because of the idea of misery loves company. We just want you to be able to relate and know that whatever it is that you're going through, you're not alone because- Everyone who's divorced has similar stories in, you know, with their own flavor. But one of the biggest lessons for me getting divorced, one of the most humbling things was realizing that I just could not micromanage what was going on at his house when I wasn't there. Well, and it's hard because then I would get phone calls like, did you get me a birthday present for the birthday that I have to take our son to? And did you, so I was still brought into the weekend, even though it's not supposed to be my weekend. I'm supposed to let that shit go. Now I have to worry that you didn't pick up the gift that you have to bring to the birthday party. And where is the birthday party? And what's the invitation and whose party are we even going to? Like, it shouldn't <laughs> be on me at all then if I have to let that shit go. But you're going to do what you want to do as a parent. And I know us moms, like I used to provide the gift, the invitation, everything. I'd still get a phone call because he didn't want to look for it. But then I learned that I didn't have to help him figure out his own parenting shit. Right. He would have to figure it out. They are capable. Right. They're capable. But I enabled him to keep calling me because I kept giving him the answers. Stop giving the answer. Right. The other thing is um, my son got hurt by the pool when he was with his dad. And my immediate reaction was, of course he did. He wasn't watching him. He wasn't paying attention. He's a bad parent. Like my kid can never go to a pool with him, his dad again. Like, okay. My, one of my children was barely crawling and we were at the top of the stairs in my house. I had gates everywhere. I had plugs in every outlet. I had everything. I turned around. My kid was down the stairs. Yes. So. I wasn't the perfect parent. There is no such thing as a perfect parent. So just remember that. And I'm sure now looking back that I'm much more mature and I've come to grips with my emotions and I've let go of that shit. I know he didn't want my son to get hurt, but that was my immediate reaction. And I know you guys understand what I'm saying because you want to be like, here we go again. 
Like I he totally can't get figure that. shit out. But I will say like some of the big accidents that my kids had when they got hurt were when they were with me, that my daughter, we were in my And did apartment. you get shit from him? No, I never did. But he's, he also isn't that personality. Right. Right. And I, right. my first reaction would be the same. Like, well, that wouldn't have happened on my watch. Meanwhile, my daughter broke her clavicle sitting about a foot away from where I was sitting. At an, another time, a piece of furniture fell on her. I was literally standing right there. So I, even though I've had those thoughts, when the kids have gotten hurt on his watch, I, I know that I have to rein it in. Right. And it and it is very hard. So if that's something that you guys have gone through as well, like we totally get it. You You really just have to figure out what's worth the battle. Right. You know, like you have to pick your battles. And I used to pick sleepovers on a school night as one of my battles and it became useless over time. It, it wasn't hurting them. My kids do very well in school. I, that in and of itself wasn't a struggle. So there are certain things that I feel like I've had to give up that I may have used as either punishments or consequences for certain types of behavior or whatever. And he and I, we just weren't on the same page with that. And he would say to me very rationally, I just don't agree with you. Right. And that's not how I'm doing it. Right. And it really left me with like, I had what? no, yeah, but also completely helpless. I right. had no that's other what option. I mean. So I had to figure out to myself, am I going to like yell and scream about this where at the end of the day, the result is going to be the same. Him right, saying, waste your energy. I just don't agree. Right. I, you have to, at some point, give them the courtesy and the respect of they're the parent. They need to figure it out and see what works for them. Yeah. Unless it's harmful. detrimental totally. and harmful totally. to them. And they're, like, it's, a, it's really important to just generally be on the same page with your ex. I handle business with my ex. We're not friends. We don't break bread. Those are things Jessica That's does. That's a whole nother episode. Right. With all of her <laughs> ex-husbands and with some ex of her ex-boyfriends, ex <laughs> I have let the, them all go away. But, you know, like the kids come home and they're like jacked up on sugar. Right. Or they come home and they like drop them off and they have like diarrhea. Like, here you go. <laughs> or we're done here. A whole bag of dirty clothes after right, the weekend. Right. That now so you're responsible you're for washing. You're not going to be able to win every battle. Right. Just pick the really important ones, like getting your homework done, getting a good night's sleep, right. taking care of your health. If your kid has allergies, obviously nobody wants to get hurt, being mindful of their health and all that stuff. We actually just had a conversation with someone about co-parenting apps, which I think are brilliant. Yeah. And so, you know, that that's that's another conversation, but you can't control what first of all, you really can't even control everything that happens. You can't when you're in your own life. Right, right, right. You can't plan anything. Right. You can control as much as you think you can control. Right. Like I can control the makeup on my face. I can't control how well I put it on because I don't know what the <laughs> fuck I'm doing. So, anyway, we're saying just try to let not sweat the the small stuff. Brush it off. Call us, DM us, hello at xexperts.com. what you can't control that you're yeah. dying to control that's pissing you off. Yeah. We'll give you some stories. And then the shit you let go. Like, I can't yeah. even begin to think Progress. of all the shit that I've let go. And I kind of just, whatever. What? We're growing. Yeah, we're growing and learning. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next episode with us. I'm TH and this is Jessica. We are the X Experts, And you just watched Divorce, Etc. on YouTube. See you next time.